views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Listening to the Psychic Professors Show, the Voices of Spirit Radio, with international medium and spirit artist Dr. Susan Barnes. This hit call in show will answer any questions you have about spiritual communication through on air readings and spirit artistry. Get ready to receive breakthrough wisdom to enliven and enlighten your life. To say this show is educational is an understatement. Dr. Susan is the medium through which spirit communication occurs and fills the canvas of your life. I'm Dr. Susan Barnes, and you're listening to The Psychic Professor Show on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with us for the next hour and let us help you experience the voices of spirit. Each week on Psychic Professor Show, we will have some of the most knowledgeable spiritual voices helping to answer your personal questions. And today, I'm so very, very pleased to have Yvan um with me. He is a healer. He is a afterlife um, proponent and researcher. I would say researcher. He's involved with helping people transition into the afterlife. And with that, I'm going to say welcome, Vivan. Thank you, Susan, uh, uh, Dr. Barnes, for having me on the show, and I'm glad to be here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Now, why don't you just tell our audience a little bit about yourself, and maybe you want to tell them, too, where you're located. Okay, so I am Vaven Perumal um, from Durban, South Africa, 43 years old, and uh, basically I head up the spiritual sanctuary called the Sanctuary of Truth and Wisdom. I started this sanctuary at about uh, 2004 um, on direction from spirit from a parent sanctuary which I was involved in and still involved in called the White Chapel. Now the White Chapel um, was established in 1966 by Bill and Nora Curra and in that sanctuary they had a deep trance medium um, where she could not remember anything when she came around about the messages she brought through and the processes of um, transitioning the information about um, how the soul comes onto the earth, the teachings um, and what happens at the moment of transition, the preparation and where the soul is taken to, and the different planes of evolution that the soul goes through has all been, um, has all been um, brought through this medium in about 800 lectures. So um, these teachings still come through. Uh, they come through myself at the moment in our meditation groups. And we've put in practice the healing techniques that spirit has taught us, um, which has been very successful over the years. So a little bit about that, um, the Sanctuary of Truth and Wisdom, stemming from the White Chapel teachings started in 1966. Obviously, Bill and Nora now are both in spirit. And um, however, we still get to interface with them. And um, we get a lot of feedback and validation about the information that we, we currently know. Yeah, I was going to ask you whether you were still in touch with Bill and Nora um, because sometimes when people on this side are doing so much work um, with the afterlife, when they go into the other side, they do the reverse. They work with us here on the earth plane. Yeah, um, so uh, Spirit has also given us information about these two uh, souls 
and the different incarnations that they've had establishing uh, sanctuaries uh, through the different ages. And from what I understand, uh, we have like a group of souls that come onto the earth plane and establish these, um, these sanctuaries as far back as Atlantis. And um, even when I met Belenora, it was an immediate recognition that I know these two people as close as my parents. So um, in our current uh, sessions, our meditation groups, and our healing sessions, the, the work that we do in every aspect of even the teachings and the workshops, Bill is always present uh, together with Nora and the masters that have given these teachings um, um, over the years from 66 to present day. So it is uh, quite unique that uh, he was my friend upon the earth plane and um, I actually helped him transition as well. And uh, now that uh, I helped both of them transition and now that they're on the other side, I get to enjoy their friendship and help in the work that we do. That's really, really wonderful. Why don't you tell us um, a who some of the master teachers were that gave you the teachings? Okay, um, so this sanctuary is um, very heavily um, associated with the Christ light. Now, I know when some people hear Christ, they, they immediately think of the religious aspect of Christianity. However, we need to understand that the soul that evolved into um, uh, Christ the Master had many incarnations over, over a period of time in preparation to become the Christ of this world. And his disciples as well had to go through many uh, incarnations of development to get to the point of, um, of, uh, of being the disciples and taking the teachings forward. So we've had um, several uh, lectures on their previous incarnations and the preparations that has gone through for these souls to come through. Why I say this is because most of uh, the teachings that come through are coming through from um, one being the biological brother of Christ called Simon. He's been the most influential um, teacher in the, uh, in the White Chapel. And um, he has told us that he spent, um, although there's no time in spirit, but he's given us some indication that the medium that he, he used in order to uh, accept the power and the vibration, the energy to come through, she had to be developed over 300 years, just to give you some indication. So his name is Simon. We call him Padre affectionately, and the name kind of stuck. Bill, being of a um, um, navy background, uh, named him Padre quite early when they came when when Simon came through. Then we had uh, another master called Lucas. Um, we also had um, a, uh, a, a one of the doctors that worked through uh, Bill called Doctor Forrest, and we had John and. Um, and a few of the other other teachers that that have come through, and Joshua as well. So these teachings are available on on my website, um, and people can go in and read them and and see for themselves exactly what what the White Chapel teachings were about. Well, then this would be a good point to tell everybody what your website address is. Excellent. So the website. Um, address is www.thesanctuaryoftruthandwisdom.com. Okay, repeat that one more time. Okay, it's www.thesanctuaryoftruthandwisdom.com. All oh, one word, lowercase. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and yes, I know I've had some of these teachings because... Um, 
I will say that Vivian and I have known each other for at least 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. I met you when, I guess it was the first time you came over to the States. Yeah, that was some time ago. That was some time ago when you came to a spiritualist church in Rochester. That's correct. And that That's was a, a, a nice experience for me. Oh, well, it was a nice experience for me, too, and for all of us who participated in the workshop that, that you were giving. And um, there was a lot of healing that was going on, and there was a lot of psychic healing um, as well as hands-on healing, and it was just a really wonderful experience. Now, I have to say, this is an aside, do you dress in white when you heal? I do. Um, however, it's it's something of a personal nature because um, you know, as you get involved with the spirituality, your vibration changes, and as your vibration sort of settles into some energy level, you get attracted to certain colors. Uh, what I do know in spirit, uh, many of the doctors, the healers. They wear like a light creamy color and a white whitish color, but there is no hard and fast rule. But um, it's a personal preference that uh, it brings a sense of purity, love, peace. And um, it also helps the mind to start to be conditioned um, in associating a dress code with going into a mode of concentration. So as soon as you put your whites on, your mind automatically feels that, okay, it's time to do healing. Okay. So. And with that, we're about to take a break. And when we come Excellent. back, we're going to start to talk a little bit more about the afterlife. you can be a part of one of the most powerful programs to help create a more joyful, loving, abundant, and peaceful world. Every day at 12 noon in any time zone, join millions of other people around the world to spend a few minutes in joy, love, and gratitude. Brought to you by Robert Schoenfeld, host of the Art of Powerful Living Radio. Together, we can raise the vibration of the planet. For more information, visit globalmomentofjoy.com. Have you ever said to a friend, I am trying to be less stressed, I am hoping to meet someone special, or how about I am working on getting a job I love? Hi, I'm Eve from Elite Tarot, host of the weekly show, Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. Words like hoping, wanting, and trying may seem innocent, however they carry with them emotional weight that actually blocks energy. Next time you start to say these words, say instead, I am becoming less stressed. I am looking forward to meeting someone special. I am pursuing a job I love. While your brain may resist, note how your body physically feels as possibility of success suddenly appears. As an intuitive coach and professional tarot card reader, I work with clients worldwide on using energy effectively to embrace joy. If you'd like to schedule a session, please visit my website at EliteTarot.com. That's E-L-I-T-E-T-A-R-O-T.com. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit SpiritFireRetreatCenter.com. Discover the healing medicine from the giant monkey tree frog, Cambo. Cambo practitioner Ginny Rutherford and professional psychic Todd Rolson have come together for lively discussions of alternative healing medicines from the Amazon. Ginny and Todd bring you Cambo Talk Radio. Tune in each Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear from guests all over the world with real life stories and the medicinal benefits of Cambo. For more information, visit CamboKiss.com. Tune into the wisdom of your soul for guidance on living a joyful life. On Soul Wisdom Radio, Wendy will provide inspiration to raise your vibration and connect with your higher self and guides. 
learn how to balance your ego and to progress spiritually on Soul Wisdom Radio with Wendy Rose Williams. Visit wendyrosewilliams.com or Transformation Talk Radio to learn more about a healing session with Wendy and her events and publications. And we're back on the Psychic Professor Show with Dr. Susan Barnes. Um, but before I want we continue, I want you to know that this show is sponsored by the Spirit Art Gallery. And you can go there at www.spiritartgallery.net. And my guest today is Vivian Perumal. And he is t- talking to us about his white chapel and and spirit and what happens when we pass over into the afterlife. Vivan, can you tell yes. us a little bit about the afterlife and then what what you need to do or how you help people to tra- to transition? Okay, so um, first we need to understand that there is a process. When a soul wants to reincarnate for whatever purpose, the soul um, is on some level of consciousness in the spirit world. There are uh, several planes in spirit of which each of those planes we have knowledge of and what happens at those planes. On these planes in spirit, there are definitive lessons that we need to achieve to move across over into the next plane. So only when the soul achieves its development does it automatically sort of merge into the next plane of consciousness. And then once you achieve that plane, you merge into the next plane until you get to the God mind, which is the most perfect source. The only thing we know about the God mind is the God mind is a positive creative force, the most perfect um, source of love and light. Now, when a soul decides to advance, and if the soul chooses to advance upon the earth plane, the process of coming through is the process of birth. And we have uh, details of the birth and, um, and, and how the soul prepares, uh, the consultation it has with the higher guides in, in, in scripting and designing and planning this life. So this life has been planned by ourselves for our own development based on previous experience, previous lives and previous um, um, lessons that we need to rectify through through the process of uh, uh, karma. But everything in this life is not just based on karma. There are things that you may never have experienced in previous lives that you wish to experience in this life. So as you come through this life and you go through its motions, you have a guardian angel, one guardian angel, you can call it the master guardian angel, that helps you to... um, um, achieve your predestined plan. But once this predestined plan is done, it's time to go back home. And this is what we're going to talk about today is exactly what happens at that moment of passing. Now, I like to explain uh, or contextualize it in this way. And I use this quite often. It's like a prisoner that uh, has has been sentenced to prison He knows he's going to be in prison for 60 years um, for whatever purpose or whatever reason he's got to be in that prison. But when he looks through the bars, he sees his family. He knows his peace is out there. His freedom is out there. And he yearns to be out in the free world. So on the last day of uh, his prison sentence, um, uh, the warden may ask him, hey, you've been such a good prisoner, would you stay one more day? And the prisoner would say, nope, I've come, I've done my term, I've paid my due, and now it's time for me to be free. And it's exactly this way for the soul. 
the soul, while it's here upon the earth plane, yearns to be back home where there's absolute love and freedom and unity. And upon the last day of its journey upon this earth, um, at that point, and this is where people uh, battle with this, the soul decides it's time to go home. God does not choose between children, his children, neither does higher guides interfere with free will. It is the soul that decides what I've come for, I've achieved. Now it's time for me to reap my rewards, go home, back to spirit, where there is love, peace and light. So that is the first decision that the soul takes. I am done with this earth and it's time to go home. When that decision is taken, it then takes another seven days of preparation. And on the seventh day after the soul decides to go home, then the soul actually leaves the body. Right now, within that seven days, there is an alignment that takes place where uh, the mind uh, the aura is purified. Um, people start to say uh, things um, to round up their life. People start to visit um, people that they haven't seen for a while. And they also become clairvoyant and clairaudient in the last seven days. Uh, often you'll hear people saying, I can see my mother next to my bed, or I can see some uh, a relative that has passed on standing next to me, or I can see a guide. This is because of that alignment between the superconscious mind, which is the soul, the subconscious mind, and the conscious mind. When the three comes together, that is the point of self-realization, the point of one moment. Now, it is important to note that when the soul comes in, at birth, we come in at this optimal point. And when we leave, we also leave when alignment takes place at the most optimal point on the seventh day from the time the soul decides to leave. Now, people battling with grief, they often say, why did God take my child away in, in, in such a horrific way? Or why did this happen? Or why did that happen? What we need to do is place ourselves in the, in, in the shoes of the soul that is departed. And I often uh, say that if your child came to you as a parent and the child says, my, uh, the most of my opportunity would be if I went to a certain college. Now, uh, from this college, I will have a bursary and I can progress in this way and I'll finally become a medical doctor and I'll do this and do that. Now, as a parent, would you hold that child back to say, no, you stay here because I can't let go of you? Or would you want the most for that child to say, go and achieve your maximum? So it is that when the soul decides to go home, we need to respect the choice of that soul to say, okay, you feel that you have more to achieve now in spirit. There are opportunities that await you. You've finished with this life. Let's support you and let's help you to transition in love and peace. So the seven days is very important in preparation for alignment. On the seventh day, um, what happens is the soul then starts to um, um, to go. Uh, in the last seven days, sorry, the loved one, a loved one, a mother, father, grandparent, will start to show up next to the bed. And the guardian angel that was appointed to for you to achieve your predestined plan will also be there. Often when we are called into hospitals and uh, we are called to do a healing for uh, people that are passing over, when I walk into the room and if I can see the guide, but no loved one, I know that the soul is not leaving. Even if I see the loved one, but no guide, I know that 
there is no death that's going to take place. But in those healings where I can see the two standing, waiting to receive the soul, then the probability is very, very high that the soul will leave. Then when we do uh, the healing, the blessing of the soul, throughout the soul to transition, that uh, prayer is very, very, very important. And there's a specific prayer to be done, a specific process uh, to be followed to help the soul to ease over into transition. So there's always a loved one and a guide to receive, one loved one and a guide to receive the soul. The soul is drawn through the top of the head. It takes about 30 minutes uh, for the soul to exit the body. I remember that um, the one case I've done recently, this lady within um, two months from being diagnosed with cancer, she transitioned. So I know this lady for maybe um, 35 to, to 40 years of my life. And obviously she had some level of trust in me because I helped her with several other healings, uh, body pains and shoulder problems and stuff like that. So when she contacted uh, cancer, she immediately asked the family to get a hold of me. When I went across, she says, I got cancer and I'm so scared. So I told her, uh, mom, don't worry. You are going to be fine. We're going to do healing for you and try to resolve this cancer. But if it is your choice, the choice of your spirit to transition over with this condition, then you can be rest assured, I will be next to your bed helping you to uh, to transition over. And with I that, think, yeah, we, we need sure. to take a break, but that was a, a lovely story. We'll continue when we come back because I do have some questions for you about this whole process. You're listening to The Psychic Professor Show, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Welcome to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat Basile, the host of the Dr. Pat Show, and I am so thrilled that we've created this venue for all of you out there. Dr. Pat Basile will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. What we have heard is that you want to ensure for us that we keep positive, holistic, uplifting, transformative talk radio on the air. We're excited to bring you the contemporary conversations about Lyme disease. We promise not to let the light fade on Lyme. So fasten your seat belts. We've got lots more to share with you in the weeks to come. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio with Dr. Pat and help keep our mission strong on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Hi there, this is Audrey Michelle, host of Rewired Life Radio. If you've listened to the show, you know I talk a lot about listening to your body. Here's the deal. Listening to your body takes quieting your mind, and I want to teach you how. Actually, we're going to start right now. Take a deep breath, a truly deep breath, all the way to the top of your inhale, and then exhaling to the very bottom of your belly, breathing feeding your body the oxygen and fuel it needs. This is the first step in listening to your body. There's more, but it's so easy. I wanna share a quick meditation with you to help you instantly reconnect with yourself and listen to your body. Simply go to audreymichelle.com slash tips and download it for free today. 
That's Audrey Michelle spelled M I C H E L dot com slash tips. Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Justice Welling. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit spiritualdeed.com. Tune in each month to Synergenetic Living Radio, where Rick and Grace Paris discuss the synergenetic way of life, what it means to truly change your perspective in life, what it means to take control of your life and manifest your true desires. For more information on Rick and Grace Paris and Synergenetic Living, check out synergeneticliving.com. Get clear on the life you desire and the current life you are creating and what is between the two. Synergenetic Living, living life loud. Yes, we're back on the Psychic Professor Show with Dr. Susan Barnes. And and we're going to continue now with Vivan because his story is so fascinating. And why don't we ask you, what was the most unique passing you've ever done? Well, the most unique uh, passing was um, my dad's passing. And um, even this, the, 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 the last one, I was about to, to complete this, Susan, um, when the lady um, was about to transition, I was not physically in the room, and she was trying to tell her daughter that she could see me standing next to her bed because I gave an, I've given her my word that at the moment that she was about to pass, I'll be with her in spirit. So the family ran through a, a bunch of names, and when they finally got to my name, she says, yeah, he's here with me. And she says, please open the door. And when they phoned me, as I physically walked into the room um, and I did the release, the soul uh, lifted off her last breath as I, I did the blessing on her. And I actually saw the soul being pulled out the body and stand behind the body with the guide and the loved one. Now, my dad's one was uh, also interesting because I've, um, he, he, on the Saturday, he had this dream and in his dream, he saw his mom and uh, it kind of freaked him out. So the doctors called us, please come urgently. There's something going on your dad. We don't know what's going on. So 10 o'clock on a Saturday, we rush over to see dad and he says, you do not know what's happening. I saw my mom and myself walking on this beautiful beach. It was so beautiful. It was so real. I need to go home. And that was his words. So he had a chest condition and he would not have survived maybe um, a minute or two off the oxygen. So I said, dad, you need to settle down. You can't go home, but you need to stay here. And he insisted and he insisted anyway. He says, Verb, you don't understand. I need to go home. And I said, Dad, calm down. Anyway, the next day, uh, he settled down, and that was a Saturday. The next day on the Sunday, we, we, we go to see him, and I see his mom standing next to the bed, and I see his guide, and I tell my wife, I said, you know what? My dad's going to transition today. Um, and then about... Uh, 10 or 11 o'clock during the day, I see this pastel light, like a blue, a purple, a pink, uh, a white light, just sort of like a vapor or a gas light, an etheric light flowing down upon him. And as soon as it hit his head, he says, Verve, pull the sheets down. I'm feeling a bit hot. And I said, Dad, you should be feeling hot. There's so much of power coming through. And... Um, so anyway, that continued for a while. And then he, he asked, uh, asked us at about 10 at night that we should all go home. Um, and I said, OK. And Swirt said, my brother needs to be in the room with him. And I did not understand why. So 
um, we we go home, but I keep quiet and I just like uh, kind of observe him for a while, and he starts to go into this deep meditation and it's deep concentration. So I nudged the bed uh, accidentally and he says, what are you doing here? I told you to go home. And I said, uh, dad, we are going home. So we left and when I went home, um, I went into meditation at about one o'clock in the morning and I was, I, I astral traveled back into the room where he was and, um, and I witnessed his soul leaving. And as soon as I opened my eyes, I just remember mentioning to my wife that, okay, dad is gone. Then the phone rings for us to come to the hospital. I said, there's no need to rush. He's already left. Um, and then obviously by the time we went to the hospital, he was already transitioned. Then the reason for my brother that needed to be in the room with him, he took dad's passing the hardest and he actually physically needed to get closure by seeing or being there when his soul was going to transition so that was a unique one but there's several other cases that um, that have uh, transpired where we even had people that went over that have come back in the meditations and 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 said vaven you are absolutely right in what you told me in your prayer but the one thing you couldn't give me is how beautiful it is when you're transitioning. The light, the experience, uh, the music that they hear as they ascend cannot be created upon this earth plane. It is truly an experience that holds you in the highest of consciousness uh, where you feel and you vibrate with this divine love that the soul does not wish to come back upon this earth plane. It's truly an amazing experience. It sounds it. Now I have to ask you, was your father a very spiritual man? Yeah, he was. And uh, he is the reason for uh, me being uh, so hooked up. In fact, I was born in a home that uh, advocated the teachings of the masters from the East of the Tamil uh, culture and religion. So he often researched bio biographies of these masters and we were, became quite familiar with him. And even the local temple started its um, religious practice in our living room of the home. So yeah, it was day one on point. Um, uh, being exposed to uh, deep spiritual uh, practices. Yes. Now, I also think we we should mention what your religion is. Okay. So I was born into the Hindu religion. Um, however, um, as I grew up, the ritualistic practices of the religion did not make sense. But... As most people know, in the uh, Eastern belief or the, uh, the belief of the uh, masters in India, the religion can then be extended into deep meditation, healing and, and that sort of thing. So once I became involved in Bill and Nora's um, uh, setup, the healing, uh, people being healed, meditation, breathing techniques, healing techniques, color, these were all familiar to me because the, this is exactly how uh, the masters in the East went about their development. So it didn't seem as if um, I was jumping across from um, um, uh, Hinduism to Christianity or spiritualism. For me, it felt all one of the same merging together in one consciousness. And I, I still feel that way to today. When we do healings for people, uh, the, the guides that show up are the guides more associated with the patient than myself. As an example, um, um, we could get a, 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 a guy coming in for a healing and um, we could see one of the Hindu masters like Sai Baba being next to the bed doing his healing. 
in the next healing, in the next patient that walks through the door, you could get a Jesus Christ doing healing. You could do a Mother Mary doing a healing, an Egyptian guy. So these masters that, that actually conduct these healings, there is no religion and segregation between them. So for me, um, it, this is man-made um, for a good purpose on the earth plane. But once you get to a level of consciousness, you see across religious boundaries and you see spiritualism as a vibration of love. Yes, that's very, very true. But that's really, really interesting because if more people could become this enlightened, then there would not be as much conflict in the world today. Um, so I know, yeah, we're running, we're running out of time. There's another segment that's coming soon. But when we come back, I want to ask you about what happens when people die suddenly? Because your um, procedure sounds like it's all pre-planned. Um, and for some people, it just happens very suddenly and very unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll talk about that after the next break. So okay. you are listening to the Psychic Professor Show with Dr. Susan Barnes. Um, the show is sponsored by the Spirit Art Gallery at www.spiritartgallery.net. And we will be back in a couple of minutes with Viven. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. The Truth is Funny Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. Amber Teal, founder of The Healthy Edge, is bringing you the hit show, Healthy Edge Radio, living with power, passion, and purpose. Amber provides the support and tools necessary for you to finally release the weight and emotions that are hidden beneath the weight. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information on how you can take the next step with Amber, visit GetTheHealthyEdge.com. Tune into the wisdom of your soul for guidance on living a joyful life. On Soul Wisdom Radio, Wendy will provide inspiration to raise your vibration and connect with your higher self and guides. Learn how to balance your ego and to progress spiritually on Soul Wisdom Radio with Wendy Rose Williams. Visit wendyrosewilliams.com or Transformation Talk Radio to learn more about a healing session with Wendy and her events and publications. TheAngelLady.net 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 1-800-323-1790 Sue Storm TheAngelLady.net Live your magnificence, for the love of joy is a precious gift offered to us by Robert Schoenfeld, host of the Art of Powerful Living Radio. He takes us on an incredible 30-day adventure to expand our minds and hearts with the nectar of life, love, and joy. This book will help you bring more joy, love, health, abundance, adventure, romance, and magnificence into your life. Uh, yes, 
Yes, and we're back again with Viven, and we have been talking about what happens when you transition into the afterlife. But you know what, Viven? What happens when you get there? Can you give us a description? Yes, yeah, sure. So, as you know, um, there is a silver cord that attaches the physical body to the soul. Now, every night when you sleep, the soul leaves the body and goes back home to spirit. The silver cord uh, stretches to uh, minuscule of a hair strand, but does not uh, does not break or severe or sever. But it stretches, and you go home and you come back, and you go home and you come back, and this is. Uh, something that happens every single night and people have astral experiences. It also uh, happens when you meditate. The soul leaves the body, consciously leaves the body and the silver cord is the one that attaches the soul to the body. Now, at the time of transition, right? Um, And please understand that The process of entering for a soul to enter the earth, the process is birth. The process to exit this earth is the process of transition or death. It's not a finality, but it is um, a, a transition to a higher state of consciousness. Now, at the moment of death or transition, as the soul comes out, the soul is still attached to the physical body. It takes three days to the second that the soul leaves the body for the silver cord to diminish completely. Now, within those three days, um, if the family members make some effort in burying the body or cremating the body, then spirit become aware of this and they try to uh, do like an emergency, uh, um, um, uh, yeah, like an emergency disconnect of this silver cord so that the soul does not feel the effects of the heaviness of the sand or the heat of the flames, right? Uh-huh. So it is important when people know that somebody is transitioned to pray for them, to pray and surround them with light, to put a cross of light on their forehead. This will help spirit tremendously have the right energy around that soul to do these things. So three days to the second, the soul and the body is now detached. The soul, as soon as the soul comes out the body, the soul sees the loved one first. And obviously, if you can think of people longing to see their mommies and daddies, and um, as soon as you come out, you see your dad or your mom, and you get excited, and there's this union and this bond, that soul is used for that purpose, to gain trust, to calm the soul down. And then the loved one from spirit says, right, this is... You've transitioned, you're gonna be with us. I'm here to help you upon your request. I've come to help you. Here's your guide. Your guide is going to answer all your questions. And the soul could have a million questions. And the guide is there to calm you down, to answer all of your questions as to what's next, what's going to happen to my family, where am I going to go, where are you going to take me, what do I do after this? And the, and the guide gives you guidance. That's why we call them spirit guides. Now, once that uh, acceptance of the guide and the loved one takes place, that soul is pretty okay. Even if I was the worst murderer upon this earth plane, and if I came out of my body, and if I saw my loved one, and if I saw my guide and I accepted them, I would also go home to spirit where then I would realize the wrong that I've done and I would know what to atone for it. So it is important that we educate people as soon as they come out of the body to accept the love of the uh, to accept the help of the loved one and the guide, 
And if as long as they do that, most definitely they'll make it back home to spirit. Obviously, there is another path for souls out of their own free will who do not accept the help of these guides. The guides cannot force. They have to respect free will. And these souls then become earthbound spirits until they ask for help and go over. But that's a whole different topic we can get into that could take a few hours to explain that. Now, when the soul uh, and uh, when the soul accepts the guide and the loved one, you are taken to the homes of rest. The homes of rest is like a hospice place in spirit. Some of the people, this is on the astral level, which is just above the earth plane. So it's not a very high vibration in spirit yet. The, the astral plane is a direct copy of the earth plane. The astral plane is not the heaven plane that people think about, where there's rolling green grass and, and unity and peace and love. That is on the third plane. The second plane is the plane of realization. Third plane is the summer lands. And the summer lands are referred to the, the, in the gardens of perfection, the heaven. Now, when you are taken over, you are first taken over to the homes of rest. In the homes of rest, the guide will then touch your forehead, the third eye, and the soul will go into a deep sleep. The soul will then be shown visions uh, of the life that it has just come from. And then the soul will start to realize uh, why it has gone through certain types of lessons, why it has taken certain birth. And there'll be questions that the guide will then answer through communication of the mind telepathically or through vision through the third eye. Once the soul makes peace, then the soul comes out of the sleep state. Now, this is an interesting part as well, is that a spiritually evolved person who focuses on clearing the subconscious mind and spiritual development, their sleep state is short, right? It can be a day, two days, a week. It's hard to say because there's no time in spirit. But souls that got a lot of baggage to work through, who don't have the right levels of understanding, who are more religious than anything else as well, who has picked up the wrong teachings upon the earth plane, they sleep for a long time because there's a lot of counsel that the soul and the guide has to go through. So it comes about in, in, in stages of visions where you start to understand, oh, I've created this drama for myself, or I missed this opportunity, or I should have done that, but I've, I've created this. I need to get forgiveness from that person. And this sort of uh, understanding comes about. That's interesting because there are a lot of messages that I get as a medium that um, tell me uh, that people are coming back to ask for forgiveness from someone on the earth plane. And we're just about out of time, and we had told people that with sudden deaths, I just want you to assure people that even with the sudden death, the spirit or the soul, you said, goes through that uh, preparatory stages ahead of time? Yes. Yeah. So even with sudden death, the soul has want to experience um, um, that type of, uh, of death for whatever purpose. Now, there was a guy that sat in meditation with us, two of his kids when they were 12 years old, they were in an accident and they were decapitated. And later on, um, obviously that was a lot for a parent to go through losing both his kids in an, in an accident. But later on in meditation, these kids came through and they said, dad, we wanted that experience because we are helping all the children that pass over in accidents. We help them to settle quicker because we know what it's like ourselves. So we had to go through it so that we can be of help and assistance in spirit. This is part of our development. Well, you know, 
thank you very much because that's kind of what I tell people, especially if they've lost a child or something. Um, I tell them that that there is a reason for it and the child is, is helping in spirit. And I know a lot of parents who've lost children that are able to communicate with them now. But we have run out of time and we probably could talk for another hour. But you've been listening to the Psychic Professor Show, and next week on the show, we're going to have Gretchen Bickard, who does um, sound healing. So we're going to continue with our healing theme, and I, Vivian, I want to thank you very, very much for being my guest today. Thank you, Susan, for having me. It was only a pleasure to, to connect with you again. Thank you, and good night, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, or whatever time it is for you in the world. Have a good day. You've been listening to The Psychic Professor Show with Dr. Susan Barnes, the Voices of Spirit Radio. Dr. Barnes' deep knowledge of spiritual issues provides an hour of lively talk and discussion about everything from historical facts to transcommunication. To download this show or any past shows, or to learn more about Dr. Susan and her spirit-inspired art, visit spiritartgallery.net.